to me, definitely that dream career is something that um, that has been um, a journey for me, you know, for quite some time now. You know, I've been chasing that dream for for quite a while, and um, I've spent five years on a university learning civil engineering, right? And then I, in 2006, I started <clears throat> to work as a civil engineer in UK, in Scotland. I've spent four years in Edinburgh. Um, and yeah, I was kind of, you know, on my path towards becoming this uh, civil engineer of all sorts. You know, I was part of projects that, you know, all kind of the biggest project I was involved in. It was uh, 200 million pounds. It was uh, it was a massive uh, motorway junctions and, you know, kind of uh, motor motorway uh, project. So we need, it was a massive, massive undertaking. And um but I just didn't have the feel for it. You know, every Sunday for me was a, a huge depression. You know, I just, I never liked that work, that job. You know, I really hated it. I really dreaded it. Every time I, I you know, I had to wake up uh, on the next day or specifically Sunday was the worst for me because it was just a nightmare because I knew that tomorrow I need to go to work again. And I'm sure that, you know, some of you, hopefully not a lot of you, can relate to that uh, to that matter. You know, where you when you're kind of stuck in this dead end job, it wasn't really a dead end. You know, I could kind of progress my career, and actually on my path towards kind of making the decision on on leaving that specific field, I met a um, uh, a director who was like 25 years ahead of me. He was 55 at the time. I was around 25, and. It was actually a few levels, you know, I was a civil engineer, like a graduate engineer. So I was just at the very beginning of my career when it comes to that field. And he was pretty much at the, at the other end, right? So he was the director. Uh, so he was a, a lot of levels above me. But I was lucky enough to actually work underneath him because I was kind of, uh, my immediate managers were in, in Glasgow. And I was actually um, based in Edinburgh. So we had like two offices. And luckily, uh, because my line managers were in in Glasgow, I got to work closely with um, with the director because he was above, you know, the two of those managers, and um, and therefore I was kind of exposed to what this career looks like twenty five years, years into the future. So therefore, it helped me in moving in time. So I guess the first tip that I would give you, if you are kind of feeling stuck in a career or uh, or, or you're not sure if this is the uh, the the path for you, you know, just to re, I would do what I did, you know, it really helped me out. Reaching out to someone and getting close to someone who's actually 20 or 30 years in front of you, career-wise, uh, and then see, you know, what their job is like and kind of reach out to them and, and figure out if what they're doing, what stresses them out, what, what they're passionate about, etc. How does their day-to-day -day kind of work look like? And if it's something you would like to pursue over an extended period of time to actually get there, right? So I wasn't happy with that, with that, with that, um, with what I saw, you know, with, with, with what he's doing, what his job looks like, etc. So, yeah, I, I decided to quit. I left my job. I, um, I sold everything I had. And, um, yeah, we bought a motorcycle together with my wife and we started to travel. So we sold everything we had. Whatever we couldn't sell, we gave away to people. And um, whatever nobody wanted, we just basically, you know, dumped it and put it into the trash and or gave it away to people and yeah just packed up on the bike and we just went for it so we went uh, for a year-long trip on a motorcycle through south america and the u.s and after we came back it was 2011 so it was still the the crisis was still kind of happening the global financial crisis from 2008 2009 we could still feel the um the the, the you know the the effects that it had on businesses and nobody was hiring etc so we had to redo the whole thing um, and kind of, um, yeah, find ourselves again. So that's what I, that's when I really got into kind of finding my path. And, um, but I was already doing the web page, uh, for, for the vlogging, uh, on the, on the trip itself. So, um, I really enjoyed, you know, editing videos and doing the web design for, for our vlog or blog, etc. It was pretty cool. So I wanted to pursue that. It was like interesting to me. But I knew nothing. It was 2011 and I knew nothing about UX design or design thinking and all of that. But because I got into this early um, early on and really like passionate about it, you know, I learned a lot because every weekend I was working away, which I'm kind of doing still. 
um, and this is something that I will also, you know, put put out there is, you know, find something that you really like doing because that helps, you know, with the amount of work it need, it requires to actually get to where you want to be. So um, enough of a rant about about the background of mine. So that's how I kind of got into the field of, of, of you know, of, of, of learning about this thing. And if this is something that you would like to pursue, if this is something you're interested in and kind of passionate about, I would highly recommend, you know, um, giving, it, giving it a shot, you know. Experience design, so UX design, is all about designing experiences, you know, making sure that when you do use an app or a computer, that interaction between a machine and yourself is something that uh, is desirable, is something that's interesting, uh, you know, cool, awesome, etc. All of those um, great words that we want to hear when somebody is using our service or our product. And that interaction in between an interface of whatever, that's, whatever that interface is, is it an interface of the phone, an interface of the computer, designing that interaction between a human being and that interface, that's where user experience design kind of comes in. It uses a lot of different elements, you know, information architecture, how to organize the information, how to make it pleasurable, you know, nice to look at, aesthetic, uh, how, you know, how to communicate with the user, etc. All of those elements you can actually check out on the on the UX crash course we did two weeks ago. It's for free. It's on YouTube. If you go to 99grid uh, um, at YouTube, you'll be able to find that, um, that training over there. So definitely um, check it out. So... Um, that's what UX is to me. Uh, so that interaction between a human being and an interface. And um, luckily now, I think, um, this role is changing or evolving into something different, slightly different. So it becomes more of a broad perspective role that actually connects a lot of those elements together. Um, so it's not just about, you know, designing wireframes and, uh, and just design itself. I found that if you have a capability of putting yourself in the middle of the entire process and all of those different stakeholders around you in a project, that's something that a lot of companies are, uh, are actually looking for, you know. Um, when it comes to the process itself, first of all, uh, what, what is it built of? Well, first of all, there's, a, there's this business side of things. So there's a person that employs people, runs the service or the product, and kind of wants to improve it. So let's imagine, I know it's owners of Spotify, right? You know, um, that's the business side of things. So these are the people that define the requirements. There's some specific outcomes that they want to achieve through uh, through their software, you know, get more customers, get more revenue, more margin. They're, they're looking at this whole thing from the business perspective. And if you do have any understanding, regardless of how old you are, but if you have any understanding of what revenue is, profit is, um, you know, um, margins are, uh, customer segmentation, what that is, um, corporate social responsibility, all of those aspects, you know, HR, if any of those fields sound uh, familiar to you, that's one step ahead already. So that's something you can leverage very heavily when you become a UX designer. So whatever experience you have so far is definitely relevant. You know, me being a civil engineer, I can, f I I can find so many um, things that I can leverage from that skill set with the UX design role, you know, if you, for example, if you if you look at um, uh, a civil engineer being the designer, like I was, I was a designer, so I was designing these motorways, designing bridges, designing, you know, all of those, um, you know, the the the, the carriageway itself, etc. So I was designing that, and uh, there was a separate company that was uh, constructing that, and the amount of similarities between me being a designer then. And trying to translate my design to a to a contractor, to a person that needs to build this, is enormous. When you're actually comparing UX design to development, it's exactly the same mental models. You know, I'm trying to do something creative or or solve a solve a problem. Not really being creative, but solve an issue, solve a problem with my design skills. And I want to once I have a solution, I want to make sure that I transfer that information to the contractor or to the developer in the UX world, right? Right. So. I think that the combination between, you know, let's imagine an architect and a contractor is exactly the same um, as an analogy when it comes to UX design versus uh, develop development. So like app development or, you know, 
any any technological stack that you want to use, but it's very relevant, and that's how I leverage civil engineering with my world. So if you be, if you if you if you come from a different world, you know HR maybe maybe, maybe marketing, uh, maybe technology, maybe you know business itself, uh, or I don't know systems analysts or process um, ana analysis. All of those elements you can leverage with the UX um, design role now because I believe that it's mature enough that just doing wireframes is not enough anymore. You know, I think that just drawing pre pretty pictures, you know, in quotes, that's something that's um, obvious. You know, you need to be capable of doing that as a UX designer. You know, it's like, you know, that's something you should know. That's your skill set. But if you add additional layers of your experience and perspectives on top of that, you just become that more, that, that much more of a powerful package when it comes to, yeah, your role. And I think that's what's changing currently. So UX designer is not just design, it's design, obviously, but there's additional factors coming into this. And the more of those you have, the more powerful of an impact you're going to have. Okay? So that's kind of what I wanted to, to mention here. So the new role of UX designer is changing, it's evolving, and it's exciting because Anyone can join now. It's like, you know, once you get those basic skills under your belt, you can definitely leverage whatever you already have with, uh, with the new way that uh, these new requirements that are pretty exciting because we're putting UX designers in the middle. So it's like business, uh, you know, whatever field the business is, HR, you know, marketing, whatever. Um, then we have the design itself, obviously. We have some research. So if you have some skills, capabilities, talking to people and you're good at that, we'll get into the skill set uh, shortly. If you have any technological assets in your, uh, you know, your brain capabilities, um, that's something you can leverage also. Because the more of those you have, the better UX designer you're going to be. Because I believe that it's not just you're not UX designer is not just about design and doing research with customers. It's putting yourself in the middle of that process and being a link in between all of those things. So if you do become that link between the business, the, their customers, your design, and the development. If you can put yourself, so the technology, if you can put yourself in the middle of that and be able to talk to all of those um, stakeholders in the process, man, that's a pretty powerful package to have. And um, that's what I think, you know, this whole new role of UX is. And that's really exciting now, right? So it's not just a wireframing monkey. It's it's definitely more than that. So, so that's that. Um, okay, so moving on uh, to kind of the, the first tip that I would that I would give you. So the first thing is, Map out your skills. I don't want to get into the kind of depth of probably there's even more um, skill sets available. And this is just something to put your brain into this mode of, okay, so what do I know? Uh, what am I good at? Uh, and there's an additional tip. I'll give you to that one. But um, it's what kind of skills do you think you have? Like people skills, are you good with people? Uh, do people open up to you when you're kind of, you know, sipping a beer and talking to them in a pub? Uh, do you feel like they are drawn to you for some reason or uh, they have this this um, this um, discomfort uh, of sharing, uh, you know, information, probably too much, uh, but sharing some of the information, me personal information with you? That's a quick giveaway that you're pretty good with people, that you're pretty good uh, that your empathy levels are pretty high because people trust you immediately. And um, if you have those kind of skills and um, and you can actually relate to people at that depth of a level, uh, and that's something you can definitely leverage in your research when you're talking to customers. You can put them in a comfortable situation, you know, in an interview, you know, that's already awkward. But because you have these people, people skills, you're able to actually make it a a good, a cool conversation for those um, for those attendees. Uh, for those stakeholders in the process and that's something you can leverage to start off and then build the other elements of your skill set as you go so this is you would go into maybe ux research uh kind of um, element of the process so you'd really focus on how to get to the bottom of the issue talk to some people talk to the customers and if you're really good at that and you really like talking to people that's a good starting point to start with to get into the entire ux design field right um so that's one uh, another one is management skills. So if you do feel like, uh, yeah, you've been running teams or you're good at, you're good at managing a project, for example, so you're a project manager. Uh, so it's not just running structurally, but actually running project-wise project, uh, project uh, wise as well. Uh, so if you're good at running things and kind of keeping things organized, uh, you have, you know, if you look at a time frame or you can't really work without one, 
that's a good, good quick giveaway that you're pretty organized and you know, you've got some management skills. And that's something that you can definitely, again, leverage when you're uh, building this, structuring these, these design projects. Because there's a lot of, you know, links, a lot of things happening. So you need to manage them somehow. So you can then get into UX with some, you know, simple additional skills and kind of start running these projects for people. Get yourself immersed into the environment of, of UX design through project management, for example, or... If you've been managing teams, you can definitely help these guys out. You have some specialists and you can help them out with structuring their processes internally, externally, how to approach clients, et cetera, et cetera. And that's something you can also leverage to get into the field. So management is definitely something. Visual skills. So if you're a graphic designer, visual designer, motion designer, photographer, filmmaker, um, all of those kind of skills are related to composition, to layout, to, um, to color uh, theory, to branding, uh, if you have skills around that specific um, sector, sector field, it's definitely something you can leverage very quickly because you've got a lot of kind of preconditioned um, abilities that are very relevant to UX design. So when you aren't starting to put the wireframes together, when you are putting the, the flow together, um, it's a lot easier for you to kind of structure that information visually on any given form, you know, is it a book or is it a, an interface? It doesn't really make much of a difference. If you have a skill set of visually presenting information in a nice and aesthetic way, that's a huge um, impact you can actually have when you are getting into this field because you already know a lot about how to structure the information on any given uh, format, right? So again, you know, is it a book or is it an interface or is it an app? It doesn't really matter. You know, it's just the format. Uh, that's changing, but your ability to structure information using typography, iconography, illustration, colors, and all of those aspects you already have. So now it's just a case of instead of just um, painting these interfaces now, you can actually get into, you know, putting them as in, into a process. You can learn about customer research. You can learn about, uh, you know, how the information should be grouped together when, you, when you're dealing with, with bigger entities or, or, or of a system. So that's definitely something you can leverage. And, you know, the leap is probably to get to wireframing, you'll be able to get there faster. But sometimes when you're very visual, you might lack some of the management or technological skills or, you know, maybe people skills as well. So that's something that these are the skill sets you can then try to add on to your uh, toolkit, right? So that's that. A uh, fourth one is the analytical skills. So if, you, if you're a systems analyst and you're good at uh, solving complex issues and kind of analyzing in detail what kind of elements you know are required? What's not needed? How, what, what is the subsequent step? Kind of um, what is the sub subsequent um, set of events that need to happen in a certain way? These are the elements you can definitely leverage as a UX designer because it's all about analysis of requirements and of different stakeholders. So if you're good at analyzing uh, requirements, uh, you can definitely leverage that. So if you know how to. Uh, build a list of business requirements or if you, if you know how to build a list of customer requirements, merge those together into one uh, requirements spec and then organize them into some sort of a wireful process, etc. That's a massive uh, skill set you can actually bring with you and become this UX designer uh, pretty quickly, actually, um, because you're just touching different parts of the beast, you know, <laughs> different parts of the elephant, really. And um, to me, the, the whole strategy about this is Start somewhere, build on your current skill set, attach yourself somewhere to this elephant, and then just you know start eating away at it. However, that sounds. Um, so, so that's analytical skills, and the last one is technical skills. So, if you're a developer um, or yeah, civil engineer, you know these are all the kind of engineering skills, you know, and kind of the the value that brings, you know, the way that, that you look at specific things, how to solve a problem, you know, your, your, your brain sometimes kind of switches on into this engineering mode like mine does. And so um, there's a lot of determinism. So cause and effect, cause and effect. And that's very, um, yeah, it's pretty crucial when it comes to the way that I structure trainings, for example. So when I do build the trainings together, civil engineering and what I've learned over there, you know, that there's a, every action gives me a, an opposite reaction, you know, and those kind of, uh, connections are pretty strong when you have that skill set and that understanding because I've met so many different designers along my path that struggled with that you know that they want they were too focused on one thing um, and they didn't see what is the, the anticipated outcome of whatever of whatever they're doing 
on the on the on the on the impact that we're trying to to have in a specific project, for example. So so that's one thing. Now, another aspect of the technological skills is you know if you do know how HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, or you know Java uh, or .NET or any one of those technological uh, stacks or technologically related um, elements work, if you know that. That's a huge, massive uh, skill to have, or knowledge to have, or experience to have, because you know a UX designer's role is to design something that's implementable. You know, and if you have that information that you know how HTML works, and you know how you know the the, the front end or the back end works, you're able to leverage that very much because you'll be designing things that have this great capability of being easily implemented by any developer. And that's a huge thing to have. Um, because I can't tell you, and I can't stress this enough, how many projects I've been on where we're designing something and then it goes into the implementation stage. And there's so many issues that have not been even considered to start with because we were lacking that technological skill that way of looking at these things. And me going through the years of developing my career, I found that the more I learned about, you know, development, the easier my job became because I knew that <clears throat> there are specific things that I need to consider. It's not just about gluing an input field on the, inter on the interface with a little, um, with a little, you know, like a search icon. Um, uh, because, yeah, the user is going to be searching in that field because there's so many questions that need to be answered it's not just an input you know there's a database uh, underneath that input you know when do we start to search after i've put in like three symbols do i start searching and asking that database for information back to me when i click enter when i click search or is it being done asynchronically in the background <clears throat> the the more stuff i put in the the more detailed that request is going to be there's so many things that go and that's just one input field so when you do understand the capabilities and the limitations of hardware and software, that's a massive thing to have. And you can definitely, again, leverage your skill set on that and build that ultimate experience design role for yourself. Uh, so again, to sum, it up, to, to sum it up, people skills, management skills, visual skills, analytical skills, technical skills, any skills I believe you can actually leverage um, to become this UX designer um, to start with, right? To, so you know, glue yourself onto this elephant and then just start eating away, however that sounds. So, so that's, that's that. Another one, um, define the path. So that's kind of, you know, the build up on, on what I've already kind of ranted on. So choose that, that skill. Uh, is it personal skills? And I mean, maybe, you know, a people person, is it management? Is it technical? And build on that. Make sure that you, you don't lose it. It's a great asset, whatever that is. It's a great asset to take with you onto this UX design path or onto this UX design journey. And that's something I would strongly advise you to actually not let go of, but actually bring with you as a as a as a huge value uh, to the to, to 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 the thing, right? All right. So where to start? Um, I would, I've got like five, six elements that I would like to highlight as far as where to start, where the starting point for me was and what I would like to leverage is um, if I'm in a company currently and I'm employed somewhere, I would find a, find a department that's close to UX. So uh, that's sometimes, it's like Aga mentioned, uh, uh, the, the marketing or digital marketing, those departments tend to be closer to kind of UX. Um, but not just that, you know, if you have a, a department that deals very closely with uh, with customers, so maybe there's a call center department and they deal with customers on a daily basis. There's 200 consultants and they just phone their customers all the time. And you, if you have people skills, you can add huge value to them because they're there to do a job, phone the customer, convert them to buy the product or, or the service, and that's it, right? But you can add additional layer of experience to that. So you can then approach the director of that department saying that I'm getting into this UX thing. It's about customer research a little bit. I can kind of map out what is the experience of our customers when we are phoning them. Would you be interested in that? And usually, you know, these directors, they need to have a, you know, a little bit of a, uh, of a thinker about that. But if you do bring that uh, as a value um, to the table and you'll be like, yeah, I can do it, you know, after hours or something, I just want to really, you know, I've gained this knowledge and I would like to use it. Can, can you help me out? That's something you can definitely 
uh, leverage very, very um, quickly. So that, that's what I would do. I would try and, and look at the organization, see like marketing, call center, anything that deals with either um, the visual aspect of this whole thing, technological aspect of this whole thing, uh, or the customer aspect of this whole thing. So if there is a, an IT department and they're designing some, some apps or something, and there is no UX department, I would approach them. And I would like, dudes, there's this thing called UX design. You can design experiences in your apps. You know, you can, um, I can, I can redesign, give me a few screens of those and I can redesign them, right? So once you get some skill sets, uh, skill set underneath you, you can definitely, you know, reach out to them and do it for free, you know, and, um, and kind of show them what you're capable of doing. We're already in the company. We don't need to recruit anyone. It's me. Take me. My name is Andy. We're going to do it. And that's what I did to an extent. I've joined up as a visual designer uh, to a 600 people strong organization that dealt with uh, software development. There was no uh, UX department and I got into that company a few months after a huge graphic department has been laid off. So everybody was like, what are you doing here, man? We just laid off an entire graphics department and now another graphic, graphic designer is like, Whoa, what? You know? And, um, it was a huge, massive anxiety for me because I had all of this, you know, these huge shoes to fill with hardly any knowledge. But yeah, that's what I did. So I, I got close to those people when it comes to the IT development. And I've started showing, uh, showing off my skill set, you know, showing how I could approach a, a specific part of the interface, a specific part of the system differently, how to redesign it, you know, how to paint it a little bit better, etc. The more I paint it, uh, being the visual designer, graphic designer, the more I, the more I realize that it's not enough. So you need to look into, you know, wire flows, processes of that user, uh, customer research, talking to users, etc. And the first research sessions that I did was with my friends and my family. And I would do research with my mom and I would sit down with her. And I would show her this piece of software we're developing. And I would just ask three or five questions and, you know, record the screen and she would click around. We would spend an hour, you know, laughing away on it. And, but that, these were my, my first steps into customer research or user experience research, you know, so UX research. That's how I got into this. So I would spend a weekend, you know, with friends, you know, on a, on a barbecue party, for example. I would just take my laptop with me and I'd be like, hey, dude, come on, just sit down with me. I'm going to record whatever you're doing because I just, I just want to test if, 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 this, um, if this app that we're doing actually makes sense to people. So... You don't need to be, you know, this or that. You're not part of the profile even. But let me just see if when you do click around it, you know, is this something that you're understanding from the perspective of the interaction, for example. So I really started small and I've learned a lot with each session that I did, whether with my mom, with the friends. I've learned a lot how to structure the interview, how to make sure that it works, how to make sure that I, that I get the value as a researcher out of it, what kind of tools to use. What, you know, what fucks up when I'm actually putting that together, you know, the computer, the, uh, I, was, yeah, I was using TechSmith Moray back then. And uh, what works, what doesn't work. So there's a huge amount of learning that you can do just through doing it, right? Uh, which kind of brings me to the, um, to the second point, really, how I got into this. And there was no UX department, so I created one. So I've done enough UI, uh, enough of painting when it comes to, 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 you know, painting of those interfaces, because I, I wouldn't call that design. So I was just kind of repainting whatever has been created by the dev house. And um, yeah, I decided to, 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 to go ahead. So I did like a postgraduate study in parallel to starting that department. So I've done a lot of kind of book reading, uh, articles, videos, whatever I could find. It was 2011, 2012. So there wasn't a huge amount of information out there. Well, at least I couldn't find it anyway. And um, I probably didn't know what I was looking for. That's why I couldn't find it. But uh, I started to learn a lot about it and I decided to start my own department. So I went to the CEO and I remember that meeting vividly. I've done a lot of research on, on the process itself. I looked at the company from, you know, from an outsider's perspective. I didn't know what dev house was like, you know, what is the process of developing an app? What is the process of developing a huge systems? Um, so I sat and I looked and I observed well, what is happening and I could see the risk that we're running without this design stage because we're developing something. It costs a lot of effort to actually do that, a lot of resources, and the client's paying us dramatic sums of money for it. And we end up with something that doesn't really work the way we plan it, it should work or it's not cool enough. 
So I started observing that. And then I went to the CEO's office and I just uh, told him that, dear Mr. CEO, I think that we're doing something wrong. You know? And it wasn't an easy conversation to have. You know? I, I prepared, obviously. I wasn't talking to him about uh, wireframing or, you know, mm, beautiful interfaces or even user experiences. I was talking to him about business risks that we're running without this step in the process. So I was talking to him, we're running a huge risk of implementing something that doesn't work or something that's not usable. And then, you know, our client is not going to be happy with it. So they're not going to pay the invoice or they're, you know, we're going to be stuck with redoing and redoing, you know, multiple iterations around something that should work to begin with. And, and that's what I came into this meeting. And uh, he listened for maybe like 20 minutes. He was a very sharp guy. He's not there um, currently. Uh, he's moved on, but um, like I did, obviously. But um, he was a sharp guy. And he immediately, you know, caught onto this risk mitigation factor that, man, if we just had this department, we could then leverage and build it into something that actually provides and mitigates the risk of us developing something. You know, there's 100 people developing something that might not work. So let's just validate that early on with a prototype, with a few customers or with a few users to make sure that it actually works. So that's how I got into this thing. I went into his office, told him about the risks. I was talking not about UX. I was talking about business. I was talking about what kind of risk or business goals we're not achieving because we don't have this step. And that was a, 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 qu a quick thing that I would also uh, give you as a tip. When you are trying to convince someone, talk their language, you know, speak to them in their dictionary of elements, you know, so make sure that you do that instead of trying to convince them that whatever you want, uh, you know, whatever you want to call UX, uh, you know, kind of leverage whatever that story is with them because they don't have an understanding what are you talking about. But if you use their language and their um, value structure and use that to describe whatever you're talking about, that's a, uh, that's a massively different way to approach it. And, uh, and, the, and the outcome should be definitely uh, bigger as well. So, so I went there. Uh, he said, okay, Andy, uh, come back to me in a week's time with a plan. I need you to plan uh, how many people you need. Let's do this. Let, I just need information. How many people you need? What are going to be those roles? How does the process of you putting the, those five, ten people, whatever, into our organization, where are you going to be feeding in to the process of, uh, of our software development. I need to know that so that I know how many people and what is the change manage management is going to look like. So that's what I did. And again, that required a lot of analytical process power to, um, yeah, to figure out, you know, who I need, what those roles are going to be, etc. So if I was an HR person, it'll be a blast. It'll be like really easy, right? But for me, I had no idea, you know, what, what, what HR encapsulates, you know, kind of, how can you describe a human resource, you know? And I've reached out to the HR department, you know, within the, com uh, within the company itself. You know, I've talked to marketing. I've talked to a lot of, you know, software leads and uh, team managers just to see, uh, you know, through the, through the process of, of getting to that presentation, uh, what's, what's needed the most. And then I just built it, those five roles, put it into a process and went for it. And there was three people in that meeting. So there was a CEO and uh, uh, the vice CEOs um, also there. And I just gave the speech and it was like half an hour. I, I got the green light and yeah. And then I had a team, you know. I had no idea how to run a team, which is another skill set that I was missing. And that's what I mean. Just sometimes you just need to take a leap of faith and just get into this whole thing, you know, with your eyes closed. closed. And yeah, and just trust your gut, you know, that this is something that you're really passionate about. There's a lot of stress and anxiety doing that, but because you do like it, you're enjoying it. It's a huge blast when you're actually kind of, you know, you need to fall so many times on your face, you know, to, and you're like, oh man, I haven't thought about this thing yet. Okay, let's just rethink it, redo it, and just prototype the hell out of it, you know. So um, that's something I would totally recommend as well. So if there isn't a department, start your own one. Um, and then the third point that I'm making here is just train yourself online. Currently, you know, with this whole COVID-19 madness, um, this is something we're, yeah, we're kind of forced to do now when it comes to training ourselves online only now. But um, uh, on research and design. So these are the two skill sets I would definitely try and get my hands on when it comes to some proper training. Um, you know, reading books or... Um, 
Uh, and I'll go through the list of those books uh, so that you can actually have, have a look at it. And I'll put the list of those books maybe in the in the comment on Facebook and LinkedIn, etc., wherever this is going, uh, so that you can actually kind of look through the list and see if there's something interesting for you there. Um, but yeah, train yourself online or any course on UX design, UI design, visual design, uh, user experience research, UX strategy, uh, design thinking, all of those elements that are experience design related. Uh, definitely, you know, try to find as many courses online and start doing them. You know, at your own pace. You know, you're sitting in the tram, going to work. Try to build that skill set so that you have a vocabulary of things and questions that you need answers to, and then reach out to people. You know, like crazy Andy here, and we'll be happy to uh, to respond and yeah, help you out. Um, so that's research and design. That's something I would totally um, try and try and learn about. And then. A huge tip that I would give you, if you go to any, um, let me just open up uh, so you have an example in front of you as well. Let me just open up a um, browser page. Something that I would give you specifically when it comes to uh, learning about design is, uh, is try to copy. You know, I've, I've spent a year on a, um, on, a, on, a, on a concept art course where I would, um, uh, where I would, um, uh, just bear with me. Where I would do, um, yeah, uh, concepts for games like you know axes and props and all, all that craziness, you know, space marine helmets and, and a really cool course. And, and there's one thing that I've learned crucially that um, um, I think you, you can see my screen. Yes, you can. Um, there was one thing crucially that I've learned there. It was um, about reference and the amount of uh, digging around references that those people do. You know, if you're an artist trying to you know, create a concept for an axe for a game, the amount of reference work you do, looking at different axes, you know, different technologies to build that axe. And a huge learning curve for me was just redrawing other people's work. You know? I wasn't um, copying it to use it commercially, obviously. It was for me just to get the mileage and try to be as close to whatever I was redrawing as possible. So if you go to, um, I can actually go to maybe one, one of my boards. It's, um, it's called, um, let's say, design. And yeah, that's what I would actually, let me just share the screen on Zoom as well, guys, so you can actually see what I'm doing. Where am I forgotten that? All right, so if you would like to see, I can just see if I, where is the Zoom call? Okay, you can actually see my screen now. Okay, I'm gonna move a Zoom call back. Hello, Marika. Hello, Anna. Hello, Michal. I'm just looking at the Zoom call. There's so many people joined up on the Zoom call. That's awesome. Um, so that's that, and just bear with me. Uh, I just wanna open up the, the chat as well so I can actually respond to some of the comments, if there are any. Okay. Too many windows, too many windows. Okay, fantastic. So that's that. Okay, scrolling down so I can see the bottom of the chat. Sorry, guys, there's a lot of screens over here. So, um, okay, so you can see whatever I'm working on, right? Uh, let me just double check that. So you are seeing my and you're seeing my screen. Okay, cool. So the, what I would actually try and do is um, if I go to maybe any one of those designs, uh, da, 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 um, what I would try and do, uh, actually, let's do a search. Just go search, let's do uh, UI layout design with an A, right? And there is usually quite a lot of different um, layouts, right? And Pinterest is really cool for that when it comes to gathering inspiration as well as, uh, yeah, it's gonna suggest on the basis of what you've picked, uh, it's gonna suggest um, additional links that are you know more like this. And that's something I would start doing every day, pick a design, try to copy it. It's going to be miserable at first. It's going to be really dreadful, but this is a great way to get your, um, you know, uh, your skills to, to the next level very quickly. Because even if you just look at, let's, let's say this design over here, you know, you can already see that there's like a menu at the very top with some simple text. Uh, there's like a tagline, an input field with a button, some icons are there. Once you start doing that, you'll be able to find a lot of la kind of a lot of um, a lot of um, things that are lacking in your process in your toolkit. Like, where do you get the iconography from? You know, how do I find icons? What kind of icons am I looking for? And you know, that's the first thing you'll get. You'll get it. It's like assets. 
Where do I get these bloody assets? You know, where do I get the fonts from? Where do I get the iconography from? What is the best color to use? When you start doing that, you will dramatically increase your way of actually working with a UI, with, a, with, with, with any interface, uh, just by doing that. And I'm not saying solving design issues, do that, doing that. Just get yourself familiarized and start copying other people's work, you know? And that's a huge thing to do. If you just pick one design every day uh, in, you know, in six months time, you'll have 180 different designs done uh, and you'll be able to leverage and you'll be able to see the patterns. You'll be able to see those little tick, tips and tricks, like, you know, uh, a title and subtitle, you know, different types of fonts being used, different colors being used. And just make sure that you notice these little differences over there. And the more you do it, the more you'll be able to leverage that skill set dramatically. So I, I can promise you that big time. So that's the tip that I would give as far as that um, as far as that goes. We'll get back to my CV just to show you how to build that one also. So let's just where to start. Oh, my computer is really slowing down now. With all these different, you know, like I've got like a, 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 D, a DSLR connected to this thing uh, and three monitors. So that's probably why he's struggling. So, um, okay. Moving on, um, the next one is would be, so copy other people's work just to build that simple toolkit of, of, of skills in your, in your um, yeah, in your skill set. And then reach out to UX design communities. There's quite a lot, quite a few UX design communities out there, so definitely check them out. Reach out to them, reach out to people like me, people that are in those communities, and they're definitely gonna help you out if you are really willing to reach out to them, like really approach them in a real way, not just, you know, put a post online, it's like, yeah, any critics will be welcome. It's, you know, there's so many people doing that. And I think that that doesn't really show the commitment or the kind of the, yeah, the, the passion behind you. And I'm sure that there, there is that. Uh, so try to make it more, um, yeah, kind of um, show that you care more, like try and approach those people, direct message those guys. And I'm sure that, you know, if you direct message, um, me or you know any other of um of people that have been in this field for for quite some time you know you'll end up finding someone that will finally respond and say okay just give me the give me those things and let's have a look at them so um you can definitely uh, do that and uh, i'm actually reviewing a portfolio of a, of a of a person that actually approached me on the thursday uh we're probably going to do it live so if you're interested definitely sign up for that as well it's going to be live online ux portfolio review and i'm, I'm kind of doing that because I've been approached by that person, I just want to help out. So, so that's that. So, UX design communities, UI design communities, any design communities as a whole is definitely something to to leverage. Okay, moving on. Don't listen to naysayers. You know, the amount of people that, including my very close surroundings, that would say that, dude, man, you've spent nine years in civil engineering. What the hell are you doing? Kind of committing to this new role. So what are you going to be doing? Like designing iconography now? Illustrations? Come on, are you crazy? And yeah, don't listen to that. If that's something you're powerful and kind of inspired by, passionate about, do it. Whatever age you're at, whatever, um, you know, how many years you've, you've, you've kind of committed to whatever you've been doing so far, do it. It really, yeah, I can't stress this enough. You know, doing something that you really like doing is, is, is something that's, um, you know, it's, a, it's, it's really worth it. That's what I'm trying to say. So I was a civil engineer. What kind of start is that into this field? It actually is. So that's that. Okay, moving on. Uh, get some books to read. I'm, I just want to quick, quickly kind of run through these. Uh, let me just um, go back to maybe. Okay, there you go. Is this going to work? Just bear with me. I'm going to lower this. All right. And what I'm going to do is cover some of those things. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there you go. There you go. Start with Why by Simon Sinek. Totally a good read when it comes to finding your why. Just definitely do that. If you want to get into kind of uh, management. There's this book called User Experience Management. Uh, it's pretty cool when it comes to kind of le leading effective UX teams. But not only that, finding out you know what leaders in UX kind of look at, what is the structure of this whole thing. A different approach to UX itself is a pretty cool read as well. Uh, then we have um, user experiences, a kind of mapping experiences. I would definitely check this one out when it comes to user research, how to map out those experiences, what to put the 
uh, how to put the customer journeys together, etc. A cool read to, to, to have. Uh, service design. So this is more like uh, kind of um, um, the, the, the book uh, relevant to, uh, to I think, um, you, Ian, and that would be something that you could leverage uh, your CX work on. So this is more about service design, entire services, more customer experience rather than just UX. So definitely check that out. Uh, when it comes to this is service design, we'll start with thinking. Uh, this is service design thinking. That's a book that's a cool read with a lot of tools, kind of a Bible for customer experience work, service design work. Check it out. But yeah, this is more like uh, tools, uh, less practice, but more like um, less processes, more tools, and a little bit more theory. But when it comes to this is service design, do, there's service design doing, this focuses dramatically on the actual doing aspect of these things. Okay, cool. Um, moving on to, to the CV. So um, if you are putting a portfolio together, a CV, make sure that it's concise to the point and kind of showcases you, showcases you in the best possible way. So instead of, you know, five pages, I really try to make it as concise and as kind of leverageable as possible. So kind of professional skills looking at uh, so things related to scroll down, I'll scroll up a little bit, you know, Everything I need to know, it's like my photograph, you know, me, uh, you know, phone number, you know, the, the, the email address, etc. Then we have communication, team management, design thinking. So I was trying to visualize that aspect of, of my skill set as much as I could. A little bit of a, uh, of a back, kind of backbone of my experience, etc. Then the work experience, you know, all the way from Owen Williams back in the UK doing civil engineering, my, my, my thing. The motorcycle journey. And then just showing that into some way, shape or form when it comes to, you know, a timeline. And then... Education I did, and then the publicity. You know what kind of um, kind of presentations I've been giving uh, online, or you know on, on, the, on the conferences I've attended as a speaker, keynote speaker, etc. And what was the subject of that thing, etc. So basically, trying to um, to showcase me as a as a professional in the field as much as I can. And uh, just because I don't know, you haven't spoken on a on a conference about UX. You probably have spoken on a different conference somewhere. So that's something you could definitely leverage here. And visually, you know, show it to, 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 to whoever is reading it in a more tangible way, you know, like here, for example, on the, the Jedi level um, and no, no knowledge at all. So that it's already showing you that I'm a little bit of a Star Wars maniac and, um, and all of those things matter. So, so that's just a little bit of a rant when it comes to how to build those. Um, and, that's, and that's that. So I would really wanted to thank you for being here with me on the Zoom, being here with me on this live call. Um, it really means a lot to me, you know, that you found the found the time to, yeah, to kind of be here and um, awesome. Thanks very much. I got that's, that's awesome. That's great. We're doing this weekly, so next Monday, 10 a.m. CET, I'll be here, and every Thursday, 8 a.m. 8 p.m. CET, we're doing um, we're doing another one. So we're doing design thinking at night on the Thursday. And it's a live webinar, and we're doing these things at 10 a.m. CT every week until there's enough room and force, and there will be plenty of that. So I'm looking forward to that interaction, guys. Hope to see you uh, soon, and hope to see you next Monday. Hope to see you this Thursday, because we're, we're going to get into Mural, kind of working around the online to tools, how to down online experiences and kind of remote workshops, etc. So if you're happy with uh, on that uh, or interested in that, definitely reach out to us. 99grid.com uh, and yeah, subscribe and we'll be uh, informing you about those webinars but every Thursday and every Monday we are here we are live and we're here to do some cool design impact and help you guys on the way so thanks a lot again for, for being, um, being here with you and